Joe, as a KPMG senior partner responsible for Ghana, Sierra Leone, Liberia, how are these countries positioning themselves to be a part of emerging market Africa? Well, uh, you know, we have said many a time that uh, Africa's time has come and Africa is, uh, you know, broken down into sub-regions. So that is basically part of the West Africa sub-region or the Anglophone part of the sub-Africa uh, sub uh, region uh, together with Nigeria. And I can assure you that years gone by, we had uh, some sort of dictatorships, uh, revolutionary governments and uh, redemption governments or what have you. Uh, as a result of these sort of uh, dictatorships, uh, there was instability and the world community regarded these locations as unstable and nobody is going to invest in an unstable environment. You know, for the past few years, there has been tremendous changes. There's democracy now taking root. In Ghana, you know, it's been a democratic government since 1992. It's gotten to the stage where the EU has recently indicated that they are not even going to observe elections in Ghana again because it's matured. Now, if you take Sierra Leone, it's a democratic country, Liberia, it's a democratic country and so on. This has given these countries, you know, effective democracies in place. Now, with that comes stability. So it attracts investment. The governments are also paying attention very well uh, to the infrastructure deficit. They are embarking on massive uh, infrastructure development, roads, ports, railways, what have you. And it's becoming more attractive. Secondly, they've been blessed with a lot more extractive industries being found. And then you have the growing middle class, which is expanding so fast that you're going to satisfy the consumerism aspect of it. So combined with that and the uh, tackling of the Millennium Development Goals, I can assure you that these countries are well positioned to contribute into the emerging market phenomenon that is taking place. The opportunity undeniable, the progress that we're seeing in terms of stability and democracy undeniable as well. Still, how tricky is it for business to translate global strategy into reality on the ground? Now, if you look at the KPMG global strategy, which uh, actually identified infrastructure, which identified you know, healthcare, which also identified uh, taxation, most of these infrastructure, these uh, extractive industry companies that are coming in, you know, their first point of call is advice on taxation. You know, transfer pricing is a big thing around the world. So we are also positioning ourselves at the same time to meet these challenges. So yes, the returns to be obtained by these investors are so huge. And the risk have been minimized completely. So I would say that, uh, you know, uh, even the investors are more excited than those living in there. Shay, we've had Nigeria rank 133 in the World Bank's 2011 Ease of Doing Business Index. And this is a ranking that investors worldwide look at when it comes to where they choose to invest. Where's the work needing to be done in Nigeria? Uh, I think you know, a lot of work you know, needs to be done in the areas of um, you know, governance, corporate governance in Nigeria. Um, I think you know we also have to you know tackle the issue of um, corruption. We have to tackle the issue of sanctity of contract, and we also have to tackle the issue really basically of reputation. You know sometimes you know um, really Nigeria is not as bad you know as most people you know, um, portray to be, but sometimes you know the perception is as is, is as good as reality. So those are the issues you know that um, that we're you know working with you know. Most times, you know, when you come to um, live or work in Nigeria, you find that it's a completely different country. Um, but that's not to say that we don't have these challenges, you know, that I've enumerated. Absolutely. As yes. you say, perception yes. influencing investment decision to a large extent. Yes. To what extent has the yes. banking cleanup that we've seen in Nigeria changed yes. perception and made your conversations with clients a little yes. bit easier? Well, it's, um, it's made it easier, you know, because um, people saw what we did, you know, in 2008. You know, we had um, a really revolutionary... Uh, uh, central bank governor comes in, you know, and it cleaned up, you know, the um, the Algerian stable as it is. Um, some banks, you know, um, had to go out of business, you know, 
others you know were nationalized you know and made a government bank you know and we're still working to, to the restructuring now so so i mean there's no question about the fact that you know that's really helped you know to uh, salvage our reputation the guy who did the cleanup, you know, the banking that's and Mrs. Lamido has received a lot of accolades, you know, for what he's done, you know, both locally and internationally. So, like I said, he's helped, you know. But you know, we still have certain doubters. For instance, you know, just before I came, um, we were talking to the people from Dowell, um, from you know Dow Chemicals, and you know that's what they told me. You know, they told me, look, you know, um, we have a regional headquarters which is based in Accra, but our market is in Nigeria. We have 160 million people in Nigeria, but um, you know, we, we have a regional. They said to me, said. We went over to make a presentation on Nigeria to our shareholders. Our shareholders, you know, live in Midland in Michigan. Um, and this is, you know, Midwestern America with their values, you know, very, very conservative, very reserved, you know. And the thing they were saying basically is that why should we invest in Nigeria? Because we've got to solve, you know, three issues. We've got to solve the issue of integrity, we've got to solve the issue of, you know, corruption, and then we've got to solve the issue of returns, you know. And we don't do that, you know, I mean, just by itself, you know, we've got to do all three of them together. So you've got to show us, you know, that Nigeria, you know, has solved the issue of integrity, of corruption, you know, and that we can make good money there. We know we can make good money, but if we don't solve the other two, then we're not going to do that.